Chris Hall with South Dakota Game of Fish. Behind me is Spearfish Creek. Uh, today we're doing a little sampling, a little shock sampling of trout uh, in Spearfish Creek, one of many sites um, that they're doing this summer to do a uh, kind of a survey of the, the health and the fishery in Spearfish Creek. Uh, the roar of Sturgis is being replaced by the roar of Spearfish Creek today. And, uh, you get to see some pretty cool stuff. Doing a stream survey, uh, electrofishing, to see what the fishery is doing in Spearfish Creek. Um, mostly we sample, well, mostly we see trout in the stream. If we were to see other fish, we would sample those as well. Um, and we, we try and look at not only the species of fish, but the uh, population numbers, the sizes of fish. And we can compare that to previous times when we sampled this before. We did a pretty intense survey in 2008. Um, so we can compare our numbers to 2008 and see what kind of fish we get now. And just you're looking at population trends or health of your streams or all of the above? All or... of the above, really. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of factors, too. The, the flows in spearfish have really gone up over the last few years. And they've had some pretty, pretty big... Um, you know, spring thaws come down and move a lot of habitat around. And so uh, we may see really different numbers because habitat has changed also. We may see very different numbers because there's so much water, it's a lot harder to catch the fish also. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we can compare that to, we can compare that to 2008. We can compare that back to the 80s when sure. we used to do sites of fish. This summer we are concentrating mostly oh, on okay. Fish Creek. We're doing an intense survey that um, starts way up at the headwaters of Spearfish Creek, um, way above Cheyenne Crossing. And we, we, uh, we section out the entire creek mm -hmm. all the way to the north end of town, the town of Spearfish. Okay. Um, and we, we section the creek off into different sections and then randomly choose six or seven sites per section. Okay. Um, so, you know, most of Spearfish Creek is very, very different in different areas. We kind of try and section it off based on habitat-wise, you know, what the different areas are like. We can techni technically, we are sampling wild brown trout here. Um, they would have been stocked at one point. There's no trout native to the Black Hills. So they would have been stocked, you know, maybe in the 80s or 90s, and then, and then have reproduced since then. How long are the nets up? You put the you put the two nets up. How when did you put those up? Oh, we put the nets up right before we started the survey. Oh, so, so you did it. So we we get to a site and we've got a GPS point that's randomly selected by the computer. On occasion, we come to a site and we can't sample there because it's just it's unsafe um, or the water is just moving too fast that even if we sampled it, we'd hardly catch any fish. We have that data. Um, so once we get to that site, we, can, we, set, we set up one of our nets across the stream to block fish from going up or down out of our site. Mm -hmm. And then we use a range finder to figure out where 100 meters is to set uh, the bottom mm -hmm. net. Um, so essentially fish aren't leaving that site during your survey, sure. essentially. Um, we do three passes then. So we'll do the first pass, put those fish into a holding cage. And then we like to see a, a depletion in the number of fish in each pass. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do the second pass, put those fish in a separate holding cage. Again, third pass, put those fish in a separate holding cage. And then when we get back to the office and run this stuff, run the data on the computer, um, it'll graph it out and it can say, well, your population, you may have caught 200 fish, but your population was actually probably 300 based on that per sure. graph. And you're weighing and measuring them just, does that give you age data or just health no, of the fishery? Or? It gives us, it gives us uh, health of the fishery, it gives us condition of the fish. Sure. Um, a lot of times with trout, length is more important. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it, our, our computer system will give us a population of fish less than 8 inches and population of fish greater than 8 inches. That seems to kind of be the cutoff that people anglers would like to catch fish over eight inches mm -hmm. um, but then there you know there's also another category of people that would prefer to catch 15 and 20 inch fish, fish as well sure. so uh, measuring them is more important we do take weights on uh, anything over about 
100 millimeters. Um, and weights can give us the condition of the fish sure. that way. Okay. How many fish approximately did you catch in this stretch? In this stretch, yeah. we caught approximately about 100 fish. A lot of the sites we've been seeing, we sampled, um, we sampled two sites on Monday that were further down, and we were getting closer to 250, wow. 250 fish. Um, we see larger fish in town, but fewer. Uh, in the canyon, we're, we see a lot of fish, but they're more in the 10, 12 inch range, but there's a lot of them. So we might see um, close to 300 maybe in oh. sight, two to 300, mm -hmm. depending on where we're sampling at. Cool. So, and you know, right here we see brown trout. Um, there's sections in the canyon where there's uh, less water below Bridalville Falls. Mm -hmm. We see brook trout in there right around Cleopatra Creek. In that area, we see rainbow trout out in with the brown trout. And then in the headwaters, we see some really nice brook trout. We sampled a site yesterday. We had some really nice brook trout in those headwater sites. Cool. So that was it. Lots of fish, lots of action, spills and thrills. And uh, as always, it's good to do these kind of things when it's not so cold out and before it's waterfall season because you get to find out where the hole in your waiter where the hole in your waiter's are. And obviously I got one.